Hi, and welcome to my weekly box office analysis, where I analyze the weekend's box office to tell you how your film entertainment is doing in the box office. For this video, I will cover the debut of In the Heights, the debut of Peter Rabbit 2, and the holds for Corella, The Conjuring, and The Quiet Place 2. I will also analyze the international box office of Fast and Furious 9, and just of all the movies in, uh, in, that I just mentioned in general. Also, for this video, which is it's a very special segment for this video, I'm going to tell you how social distancing in theaters might go completely away and how it's already starting, as well as uh, how they want to go full capacity and how this will affect the box office and, th and, and just theaters in general. Is this the right thing to do or is it too soon? That's that I will, I will analyze that to tell you what I think. Lastly, I will tell you what will come out in the near future and tell you how good I think these projects will do. But before we get started, hi, hope you're having a great day. You're watching JRG Entertainment. Please make sure to subscribe so you can keep uh, getting videos like this every week, breaking down and analyzing the box office so you know how your favorite content or entertainment is doing. Also, today or tomorrow, I'm not sure entirely, but uh, today or tomorrow in the morning, I will release a video analyzing the streaming charts for this week. The debut of, this, that will include the debut of Loki and how streaming wars are getting even more competitive with, uh, with Peacock and Paramount Plus making moves uh, in the streaming wars. So definitely, if you want to know that, subscribe so you don't miss that. Also, make sure that if you enjoyed the video, uh, please leave a like. It, it really helps me, especially after how much effort I put into making these videos. So please leave a like, it, uh, I would very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. And lastly, make sure you comment if any if you saw any of these movies uh, in, during the weekend. And if you did, which movies was it? <laughs> and lastly, make sure to comment if you saw any movie this weekend. And if you did, uh, did you see it on theaters or on streaming? Okay, now let's get started. We will get started with the debuts of this week. The two movies that debuted uh, this weekend uh, were In the Heights and Peter Rabbit 2. So how did they do? Well sadly they had bad debuts or like disappointing debuts. How? Well for In the Heights it had been estimated that it would have a debut of over 20 million with the average estimate being 24 million. But in reality after the weekend numbers came in it only did eleven and a half million dollars, which is less than half of its estimated prediction average for its debut, and it didn't even debut at number one. It took second place. This is really bad because, according to Berardi, the movie needs to get two hundred million dollars to break even, which it definitely won't do. There's just no way that the movie can do that. But why did it underperform, underperform so much? Was it theaters? Was it HBO Max? Was it reviews? Or what was it? Why did it underperform? Well, first of all, it was definitely not theaters, especially after we just saw the debuts of A Quiet Place 2, Cruella, and The Conjuring, which all had bigger opening weekends just the previous weekend or the weekend right before the previous one, so two, either two weekends before or last weekend. So it definitely wasn't theaters, you can tell it, if it was, if they got bigger opening weekends, this movie could have easily gotten bigger opening weekends. Then, was it HBO Max? Well, it sure stops some people from going to theaters and to see it on HBO Max. However, there's no way it was enough people to hurt the box office as much as, uh, or just make it as go as slow as it is. And it clearly couldn't have after just the last weekend, uh, The Conjuring 3 had a $24 million opening weekend while being available in HBO Max. The movie even overperformed. Another reason why I think the, the HBO Max didn't hurt the box office of this movie this is because the movie was only watched by 70, 700,000 households on the opening weekend, which is the lowest, it's one of the lowest views for HBO Max. An example is The Conjuring 3. That Conjuring movie made 1.5 million, that, con, that Conjuring 3 movie got 1.5 million households on opening weekend. So clearly, the movie underperformed in both theaters and on streaming, meaning HBO, meaning HBO Max wasn't the cause. So, was it the reviews? Well, no. 
The reviews of the, for the, this movie are amazing, with a 96 on Rotten Tomatoes, which is really good. It's very rare for a movie to get that high, so this is really good. So if anything, the reviews just helped the movie. What was it? What, what really was it? How did this movie debut so low? Well, I really think it's the movie itself. It's that the movie itself didn't appeal to a lot of people. So then, what was it? What really was it? Well, I really think it's that the movie itself doesn't appeal to a lot of people who are in musical fans. And the marketing did not help this movie at all. It definitely had a lot of marketing, like a lot. I always saw ads and and the TV or on my in YouTube or and so on and so on. But the marketing didn't help the movie. Why do I say that? Well, because if you ask me what the plot for the movie is or what the general premise is, I would have no idea. I have no idea on what the conflict is or the angle. All I know is that it's a Latin community who likes to sing and dance, which that doesn't sound like a theater worthy experience to me. I wouldn't go to a theater to see. Latin community sing and dance. That that just doesn't appeal to me to go see on a theater. Yeah, I can maybe see it at home, but I wouldn't go see that theater. So I definitely think the marketing is not helping this movie at all. Zero percent. It just it doesn't give you any clue what the movie is actually for. One way I think they could have fixed this is obviously letting you know what the conflict is and what the angle is. I think that's a very easy way to be able to fix this. I really think the marketing needed to give me a sense of the story, but it didn't give me that. I also think that another big mistake was that they didn't cast one big Latin star to appeal more to the more to appeal more to the Latin demographic, which is the whole point of this movie to appeal to the uh, Latin demographic. But there's no big stars, which is not very good. I think they should have casted one big Latin star. Why did I say that? Well, if my mom was to see a commercial for this movie on the TV or wherever, she would not recognize anybody in it, and she would just see random people. Uh, dancing and therefore it would not appeal to her so definitely I think that this movie needed a big Latin star to so for Latin people could be like oh look at that person and then they'll go see it and they'll just pique their interest a lot more and this movie doesn't have that it has a star from Hamilton but uh, like I said it, I, the job for the marketing is not to appeal to the people that are already into musicals because those people are going to see it no matter what it's to appeal to people who are in musicals and people who are in musicals most likely didn't watch Hamilton like myself and if I didn't watch Hamilton, that probably means that I don't know the story. So there's, that's one of the problems that this movie had. And the last problem that I'm going to mention here is that there was a contra- the whole controversy with there being no dark-skinned Latinos in the movie. And it definitely is hurting in the movie, especially since the movie was supposed to help Latin representation. And that is not what it's doing. It's actually kind of like souring the movie to know that there is no... Uh, black Latinos, I guess you can say, dark, dark-skinned dark Latinos in the movie. It's all light-skinned Latinos. And it's definitely gotten a lot of backlash from that. And it's definitely pushing away more of its target demographic than it's actually getting in. This brings me to my next point, which is that since the movie definitely flopped on opening weekend, uh, would the movie completely lose, would the movie hurt Latino representation? Well, I think, I think it could, especially since the stars of the movie are all Latinos. So I definitely think it, it will hurt Latino representation after seeing how it financially flopped. Sure, it got great reviews, it got all that, but the studios care about the money. And after seeing how this movie is flopping, I'm not saying that this movie cannot have legs, especially after the great reviews, but as of right now it's flopping, it definitely isn't a good sign for Latino representation, which makes me really nervous for future movies. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Peter Rabbit 2 also debuted in theaters, and it did $10 million, debuting at number four domestically. Number four. That is a disappointing debut for this movie, and it makes and it makes sense though. Unlike in the Heights, which had like huge expectations, and everybody was saying that it was going to be a huge movie. No, for Peter Rabbit, it makes sense. I mean, the movie got pushed so much; it was one of the first movies to get pushed, and then the marketing did nothing to revive any any sort of fight, especially with how little marketing there was. I mean, I literally forgot the movie came out last weekend. That's how bad. That's how little marketing there was. I didn't even one single ad for it. So yeah, it's pretty bad. I uh, I also think that the movie just didn't have like an urgency. Or I also think it picked a terrible release date. I think they should have released it back in Easter. And I think it could have gotten a great uh, opening weekend. But terrible release date. Uh, already way too pushed back and not enough marketing. Like I said, zero, zero marketing. However, pretty lucky for this movie. It has already done good in, internationally. With it having $57 million internationally, like overall already. And most of it obviously coming from the UK, where the movie opened in Easter, which is why I say that the, this movie should open on Easter and the US as well. 
The movie they have a budget of forty five million dollars though, so the movie probably has to make around eighty to a hundred million dollars to break even. And that's not counting the marketing. If there's marketing then that's gonna have to be even more. And the movie right now is sitting at sixty eight million dollars, so it could get there. It just depends how much legs it has domestically, but as of right now, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of legs. So I'm pretty nervous for this movie. We'll see how it does, but I don't, I, if I was Sony, I don't think I would make a third Peter Rabbit. Now, let's move on to the holds, starting with A Quiet Place 2, which once again has taken the number one spot for this weekend, after last weekend, uh, for the domestic side. After last weekend, it lost it to The Conjuring 3 uh, when it debuted, but this weekend it's back at number one, which is pretty good. A Quiet Place 2 had a good hold, with only dropping 37.7% making $12 million domestically. That is really good, beating In the Heights, $11 million, and Peter Rabbit's $10 million. So, whoa, it beat two movies that just debuted this weekend. A Quiet Place 2 is on fire. Internationally, the movie did $16 million, giving it the third spot this weekend. And just in case you don't know what internationally is, internationally is uh, not counting Canada or uh, the US. So everything outside of Canada and the US. And worldwide, which is the international numbers and the domestic side, including the US and Canada, uh, the, for the box office numbers, the movie did $20.6 million, taking the second spot worldwide. So right now it's the second movie worldwide, which, like I said, includes international numbers and domestic numbers. Now, moving on to The Conjuring. The Conjuring had a 57.1% drop. As I said, it would probably, last week, uh, when I said that, it would either have a drop on the high 60s, uh, on the high 50s, or on the low 60s. So, the movie made $10 million uh, this weekend, slightly more than Peter Rabbit, uh, Peter Rabbit 2's um, uh, box office this weekend, or debut this weekend, giving this movie the third place domestically, only behind In the Heights and A Quiet Place 2. Internationally, the movie did $23.4 million, getting third place uh, internationally, and worldwide, it got first place with $3.4 million. That's pretty good, I'm not gonna lie, that, that, that's pretty good. The movie right now is the biggest mo movie worldwide. So yeah, they, they want to put in their ads, biggest movie worldwide. And take into account that this is with HBO Max uh, date and date. So there's another example that it, in HBO Max did not kill in the heights. Uh, and it's, it's clearly not killing this movie and I'm not surprised, I would not be surprised if they just keep making more and more of these. Especially since the movies are super cheap to me. And moving on to the last movie we're going to be looking at uh, in, for the domestic side. And that is Cruella. Cruella dropped 38.8% this weekend, making $6 million on its third weekend, putting it on fifth place domestically. It has officially beaten Ryan and the Last Dragon's domestic box office, but the pandemic was way worse back then, uh, to be fair. And Raya was trending on Disney Plus for almost three months over the premier axis. But Cruella has already started trending, just after three weekends. It wasn't even trending for its third weekend. So... I'm wondering if Raya got way better sales in Disney Plus and Cruella is getting better sales in theaters. I'm not sure what the deal is there, but clearly Cruella is not doing very good on Disney Plus. Uh, but overall in theaters, I think it's doing good enough. It's not doing great, but it's doing good enough. Cruella's, uh, Cruella got second place internationally, making $17.6 million this weekend. That's really good. That's pretty good. That's way better than, uh, than it did. Uh, Domestically, so overall, counting uh, international box office and domestic box office, Corella got third place with twenty four point three million dollars this weekend. Once again, it's because that's the domestic box office didn't help that much this weekend. But that would put this uh, movie that would put Corella's total at one hundred and twenty nine point three million dollars, which sounds good. But until it sounds good until you remember that the movie had a budget between one hundred and fifty to two hundred million dollars without counting uh, was advertising or marketing. And honestly, I don't know that movie can break even, which concerns me for the future of Cruella 2. Uh, it could just, honestly, they could just put Cruella 2 on hold, just like they've been doing to Aladdin. However, that movie made a billion dollars. And if that movie made a billion dollars and that movie's on hold, then I can only imagine what can happen to Cruella 2. Because let's be honest, Aladdin 2 should be filming right now. After the first movie was a huge success. So, this worries me for Cruella 2 because they spent a lot of money in this movie, and I don't think it's I don't think it can break even unless the Disney Plus sales are really good. But as I just mentioned, it's doing way worse than Raya in Disney Plus sales, so I'm not sure if it can do that good. I 
I, I, like I said, I have no idea, but it's not measuring up to Raya and the trending for Disney Plus. So I guess we'll have to see, and I guess we'll have to wait and see until the Nelson ratings catch up to the Cruella. Okay, now let's look at Fast and Furious 9. Fast and Furious 9 has officially hit $270.6 million worldwide or internationally because it's only available internationally and worldwide, so it's the same thing. So that, that's the highest grossing movie of 2021 so far, uh, at least domestically, like movie that was made domestically. So that's pretty good. Um, they also broke a record for Korea, for South Korea, making it the most uh, watched movie since uh, uh, the pandemic started. So definitely, uh, it's doing pretty good so far. I'm not sure if it can break even though, because this movie was also super expensive. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it, dep- it really depends a lot on uh, the domestic box office, and the domestic box office depends a lot on that movie. So like, if that movie doesn't go- do good, the franchise is going really down, and the box office goes really down. Like I said before, it really bo- Fast and Furious Nine really has a lot going. Uh, Fast and Furious Nine is really important to the box office. It will determine a lot of things going forward. But if you want to know a little bit more uh, about what I mean and expand on that, go check out my video on how it how it all depends on Fast and Furious Nine's box office. Link will be in the corner. Definitely go check it out uh, if you want to know a little bit more expanded on that. Okay, now let's move on to how theaters are trying to stop social distancing and how they're probably going in full capacity in the near future or some are even starting now so yes theaters are already starting to look forward to stop social distancing and going full capacity why you might be wondering well if they're social distancing and not full capacity then obviously they're not going to make as much money as they could if they were not social distancing and going uh full capacity because then they had to stop up seats and then like people can't go to that screen and it was likely just not enough money coming in. I asked if they stopped social distancing and go in full capacity. But is that really a good choice? I don't know. But also, it's already starting to happen. Because you know? according to a bunch of people, it's already already happened this past weekend within the Heights. Apparently, there was a bunch of uh, theaters where they were full capacity, no social distancing. Some specifically said that they were in Texas. And there was another one, but I forgot the state. But I think mainly it's on Texas since it's the most open state as of right now. And yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Uh, I have mixed feelings about it because I feel like at least I should save one seat between uh, families for social distancing uh, rather than just not have it at all. But I understand where they're coming from. They definitely don't have, they definitely are losing a lot of money trying to social distancing. But I'm not sure if it's a little too soon. The plan is right now, according to the rumors, uh, that they're going to stop social distancing. Uh, the weekend that Fast and Furious 9 comes out because then they can have huge blockbuster numbers which they can't have is a social distancing. So I can definitely see where this is going but I think it can very easily backfire and stop people from going back to theaters. So I think it's a very, very um, delicate topic and I definitely want to hear your thoughts uh, down in the comments. I do know that I'm vaccinated and I know a lot of people are vaccinated. In fact, uh, around 42% have been fully vaccinated of the U.S. population and 52% have at least received one dose. So I think we're halfway there. I don't know. I don't know if it's too soon. Like, I kind of think it's too soon. I definitely think it can e- very easily backfire, especially for people who are nervous coming back to theaters. And then they see that there's some social distancing and that it's all packed. And it's just, I think that will scare a lot of people away. So I think they have to be really careful with how they do this. And how they handle this but at the same time i think there's people that are going to be super happy there's no more social distancing so it's like a 50 50 it can very easily backfire or it can very easily help a lot and just bring the box office back to life to blockbuster times i uh, will see how it plays out but I, i'm curious to hear your thoughts on it so if you have any specific thoughts on it leave them in the comments how would you feel more comfortable still social distancing or you don't care if you're full capacity you don't care if they're go full capacity and no social distancing uh, just tell me in the comments. I'm really curious to know how people feel about it. So, yeah. And lastly, moving on, what are the movies that are coming out uh, uh, this weekend, uh, the upcoming weekend, and the up next next weekend? Well, this upcoming weekend, we really don't have a big movie. It was supposed to be uh, Luca, but they moved it exclusively to Disney Plus, which I will talk about a little bit more on the video for streaming. But that 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 means that the movies can just have their weekends to themselves. Hopefully, this will really 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 uh, uh what i call it uh really uh support in the heights hold I, I really hope that i hopes in the heights get uh 
good hold and hopefully low low fifties. Hopefully, if it, if it really helps, and and really get like more attention as instead of just like this weekend it really failed. So since there's some new movie next weekend, maybe it can get more attention. And I definitely think that this will benefit a lot of Quiet Place too, especially after we're seeing how good it is, how good it's doing. I definitely think no new um, no new debut will definitely keep a Quiet Place two a number one domestically. And as for that, it's the last Quiet Weekend before Fast and Furious Nine hits domestically. So that's the real test. I think that's the real test to see if Lockwoods are coming back. And I'm definitely excited to see how it does. There's definitely been a lot of controversy, a lot of mixed reviews in that movie. So. Mm, it, it, it's really hard to tell how that movie's gonna go especially like I said with theaters trying to go full capacity it's a very risky situation and I can't wait to see how it goes how it comes out hopefully good but we'll see so that will be it for this video thank you for watching like really thank you for watching uh, I hope you, you enjoyed it or you at least found this video informative if you did please make sure to leave a like uh, it really helps like I said and it just it, I've really put a lot of effort into this, making this video, so please leave a like and thank you a lot. Like once again, thank you a lot. If you already left a like, also consider subscribing. Like I said, I make videos like this every week. So if you want to know how your favorite entertainment is doing in the box office, please leave, please subscribe. And like I said, I'm doing a streaming video on streaming, how streaming is doing, analyzing the streaming charts and the debut of Loki and Peacock and Paramount Plus uh, uh, moves on the streaming wars. So if you're into that, please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the, my upcoming video. It's so going to be released later today, but I think it's going to be tomorrow because it's already pretty late. So probably tomorrow in the morning. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Uh, and lastly, like I said, leave a comment uh, telling me how you feel about the no more social distancing and full capacity for theaters. Tell me if you like it, if you don't care for it, if you if that really is going to push it for not going anymore, or if that's just going to push it to not go at all. Um, I'm just really curious to hear those thoughts and if you're planning to see any movie in the upcoming weekend. Once again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you keep having a great rest of your day. And this is Jay Entertainment, out. Oh.